go through each of these uh, lots to cover. So first, uh, Elon was interviewed. He was talking to um, the B Dubai World Governments Summit, and he said a few things about Grok. Let's listen to what he actually said. I mean, Grok three, Grok three has very powerful reasoning capabilities. In the tests that we've done thus far, Grok three is outperforming anything that's been released that we're aware of. That's a good sign. It's, in, in fact, it, it, at times I think Grok three is kind of scary smart. And you're like, wow, this thing's smart. It's scary. Grok three is scary. It's like, wow, this thing's. <laughs> it's, it comes up with solutions that you didn't even think were like you. you you wouldn't even anticipate, not obvious solutions. So Grok3 was trained with the most amount of compute and I think very efficiently trained. Also notably, Grok3 was trained on, on a lot of synthetic data and then it, it goes back and forth through the data and, and it tries to achieve logical consistency. So when, if, if it's got data that is uh, wrong, it, it'll, it'll actually reflect upon that and data that is, that is wrong, that does not concord with reality. So it's, it's base reasoning is very good. In fact, the, the even without fine tuning, Grok three, the base model is better than Grok two. So with so we're, we're really in the final stages of polishing Grok three. Probably it gets released in a few, in about a week or two. So pretty pretty soon. I don't want to be hasty in the release because a lot of the the final polish. Uh, is necessary for a great user experience. In some ways, you can think of it like a house. That last five percent, where you do the finish, the, the drywall, and, and do the painting and the, the, the trimming, even though it's not much work, it transforms the, the house. Yeah. So it's that. Just want to make sure that that last five percent is done really well, and it's a week, maybe two weeks. Um, and I think it'll be very good, and, and I think this might be. We think it'll be better than anything else. And then maybe this might be the last time that any AI is better than Grok. Okay. He said quite a lot. I, when I hear the way he said it, it feels like he's being honest, uh, as opposed to like, you know, saying these bombastic large statements. Uh, he said that it's built on the most compute ever, that it's uh, built on significant synthetic data that is able to kind of reason and that's going to be better than out there. Um, and it'll probably be available by June. Yeah. Yeah. Two weeks. Yeah. I mean, he's very, very positive. The timeline is the classic two weeks, but you know, I've been using Grok a lot. I, I've pretty much run through all of the AI, uh, you know, the key, the key yeah. products out there and, um, you know, I think uh, given where Grok, given when Grok was released, and given the state in which Grok was, I find myself using it as the most convenient, mm -hmm. quickest access because I I'm on X quite a lot, and my X is always open, so it's really easy, um, accessible, and there's not a whole lot of value on you know looking at two or three of the others. I, from time to time, did I, I did a very uh, intensive data analysis the other day, and I did it in Grok first purposely, and then I repeated it in two other uh, vendors' tools. Turns out Grok 3 was the most, uh, Grok, not Grok 3, obviously, Grok was the most, um, Grok 2, I guess, was the most accurate of them all. Um, but you know, that's just one instance. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm really excited for Grok3 and I'm really excited for it to integrate into X because, you know, the whole issue is the idea of X being the everything app. If, if Grok3 is what Elon says it is, and I have to believe him, then that eliminates a lot of work for me, a lot. So mm -hmm. I'm excited. Yeah, we're going to see whether or not Grok is better than the others. That's coming soon. We'll see if it comes soon. But I think more importantly for our Tesla investors, right, is whether or not Grok is going to be part of uh, the cars, uh, the robotaxi release, whether it's going to be part of the bots. Um, yeah. And so, the, the, you know, you have to kind of piece everything together, right? Elon did say that Grok will be coming to Tesla cars. We don't know when. 
Um, and that, you know, one reason could be that they're waiting for Grok 3 to be so good and the experience better. And then, you know, so that's just an LLM. You can ask questions, it tells you the answers. But there's this uh, exchange I had with a Tesla employee, Raj Jagannathan, Nathan, and he said, integration of AI agentic workflow across business processes and customer support, customer support looks promising. Customers will soon benefit from these enhancements. So, you know, he's confirming again that Tesla is using AI not only for the cars and bots, but also throughout the factories. And in this case, he's saying business processes and customer support. So then I asked him, might you give a clue of one example we can look forward to? And he said, voice AI agents integrated with internal apps provide personalized interaction. The voice AI agent sounds very much like a grok, or maybe they created their own. Now, it could just be internal apps, right? It could be, like you said, customer service. But a lot of people replied to this saying that this sounds like Grok going to be implemented in the cars also. Yeah. What, what's your take on this? Um, I worry about um, the amount of compute available right now in the cars. Um, you know, we're going to use a lot more of AI4's power to expand um, the, the, the models um, and the, the compute window in, you know, for, for FSD. So I doubt whether they would put Grok on the AI4 chip. Hmm. Interesting. Grok, it would yep. mean Grok having to be put onto, you know, the other a processor. I don't even remember which processor is current in the in the current vehicles. But I mean, one thing's for sure: the voice activated commands in Tesla are, mm. you know, they're yeah. you they're they're not used yeah. by and large because they're not very smart. That mm. would be an enormous improvement, uh, particularly in a robot uh, cab. But but certainly it would be a good improvement for the cars. So I'm just I just don't know whether we have the firepower in mm. the cars to be able to accommodate. A, a, it's possible. I'm given that we're using Grok on a standard laptop computer. It's more than possible, but I don't know. It's yeah. It'd be interesting. I think it's a necessity. It's a necess necessary thing to be part of the robo taxi. If you truly want a tremendous experience, you need something to be able to, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not, you need the yeah. interactive, you know, connection with the passenger. Yeah. Now, whether you can do that, you know, over the cloud, uh, to the cloud. Right. It could just be slower <laughs> response, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's more than possible, and and you will be out of, you know, you'll be out of the, the signal from time to time, and maybe they'll add, you know, direct to cell <laughs> capability from yeah. from, uh, and and that's coming. I mean, once the next sequence, once Starship takes off and can put the larger satellites in, that's more than possible. So that's everything's possible just step by step yeah okay 